The 45 minute intruder is when your baby wakes up 45 minutes into a nap and you were expecting a one and a half to two hour long nap instead. This can actually be pretty common. In this video, we are going to talk about the causes of this and what to do about it. Valerie. I am the mother of four children ranging in ages from 9 to 16 years old and I blog at babywisemom.com. I have been blogging since the year 2007 helping parents to love parenting and especially with baby sleep helps and needs. First let's discuss the causes of the 45 minute intruder. There are several possible reasons that your baby is waking up 45 minutes into a nap. One common cause for a 45 minute nap is that your baby has trouble with transitions. A sleep transition happens about every 45 minutes in a sleep cycle. So your baby moves from one type of sleep into another. At this point of transition, your baby is in a very light sleep, even basically at a point of awake. So if your baby has something come up at that 45 minute mark, it can really prevent your baby from slipping into the next cycle of sleep. One common sleep issue is that your baby is unable to put herself back to sleep. So if your baby's unable to self-soothe, or if your baby relies on a sleep prop that is no longer present at this transition, then your baby won't be able to fall asleep for the next sleep cycle. An example is a pacifier. Some babies use a pacifier to fall asleep, but it falls out while they're sleeping. So at the 45 minute mark, they come to this more alert phase of sleep and realize I don't have a pacifier and they wake up. There are a lot of other things that can wake your baby up. That can be the temperature in the room. That can be your baby's body temperature. That can be a noise or a smell. It can also be hunger. So make sure your baby's not having a growth spurt. If your baby's waking up at the 45 minute mark, is there a growth spurt happening? And be sure to see my video or read my blog post all about growth spurts. Another common cause for short 45 minute naps is that your baby was overly tired. This means your baby was awake too long before going down for this nap. So be sure you have that wake time length correct and be sure to see my video or read my blog post all about optimal wake time lengths. So you can get this correct. This is huge in getting your baby to take longer than a 45 minute nap. A third cause is overstimulation. So this means that your baby had too much action, too much noise, too much activity during the previous wake time. And it made it so your baby was overstimulated and can't really settle in to sleep well. You can help this by having a more restful wake time and or by making sure your baby has a really good sleep routine that helps soothe your baby to be prepared for sleep. What do you do when your baby is having 45 minute naps? There are a few things. First, you want to treat it like a hunger issue. So it's always wise when your baby's waking early from naps to make sure it isn't from hunger. You never want to not be feeding a baby who is hungry. So if it's a growth spurt or your baby just needs food amounts increased for the day in a 24 hour period, then you want to make sure you're giving your baby that food that is needed. If it's hunger that's waking your baby up, nothing else you do will fix the waking up early. It's always wise to be sure for hunger. You don't want to go a week not feeding your baby and then realize, oh my goodness, my baby was waking up because my baby was hungry. So always go to hunger very first. Once you are sure it's not hunger, look into other possible causes for this waking up and then you always want to treat the cause. First, we're making sure it's not hunger and then we move on. So we talked about a transition issue for when your baby's waking early. So if the room is getting really hot, then you want to try to cool it down. If the room is too cold, you want to try to warm it up. If your baby is hearing a noise, perhaps a sound machine will help. If your baby is unable to self-soothe, then teaching your baby to self-soothe will help with that. Or if there's a prop that is being used that's kind of leading your baby to not being able to make it through a full sleep cycle, then you might want to remove that prop. We talked about being overly tired, so you want to make sure you have that wake time length correct. Keeping notes is always a great idea. 
I always kept logs with all of my babies and I actually have a log ebook that I sell that is the logs that I use for my babies that really helped me make sure my babies were getting the sleep they needed. You can get a copy of that book in the shop on my blog. I always highly recommend, of course, you're sure your baby isn't hungry, you're sure your baby doesn't need anything, waiting 10 minutes when your baby wakes early before going in. With my first baby, I did not do this. As soon as he was awake, I was right there. But when my second baby came along, I had a not quite two-year-old to take care of. And so there were times that I was taking care of him when she unexpectedly woke up early and I had to get him settled before I could get her because he wasn't even two. Like he needed to be, be I needed to be sure he was safe before I got her out of her crib. By the time I did that, it would take about 10 minutes. By the time that was done, she was back asleep. And so I quickly realized if I wait 10 minutes, she might just go back to sleep. Like she might just be having a rough transition and just is crying between this transition or making noise. Sometimes they're not even crying, they're just being noisy. And so waiting 10 minutes can really help them to just go back to sleep. If they don't have any needs, then they'll take just that five to 10 minutes to go back to sleep. So sometimes waiting 10 minutes really helps your baby just go back to sleep and it helps prevent you from starting a habit of waking up early. When we go in too early, when they don't have a need, then we're training them to only take 45 minute naps. But if we allow them to go back to sleep and get into that next sleep cycle, then we're training them to take a one and a half to two hour nap instead. And so with that in mind, it's always wise to limit your monitor use. You always want to make sure you can hear your baby, but if your home is large enough or small enough, and if you're close enough to your baby's room that you can hear if your baby is truly crying without a monitor, then I recommend not using that monitor for nap time. If obviously, if you can't hear your baby without the monitor, you want to use the monitor. And in that case, I recommend turning the monitor volume down so that you don't hear every single noise your baby makes. Babies can be super noisy sleepers. And sometimes we hear one little peep and we think, oh, they're awake, I need to go right now. But if we wait and make it so we only hear them if they are truly crying, and that is without a monitor or at least with very low monitor volume, then we don't go in so quickly and we give them the opportunity to fall back asleep. Sometimes we hear a little peep and we run in and they're not even actually awake. They're just making noise in their sleep. And so we then wake them up by going in. So it's always great to kind of watch your monitor use. Sometimes a video monitor can be a great option because then you can see what's going on and you're not only relying on your ears because sometimes they're making noise while they're asleep and you look at the video monitor and see like, oh, they're still asleep. They're just being noisy right now. It is also good to always consider milestones that could be going on or wonder weeks or sleep regressions that can be happening. And I have posts on what to do if things like rolling or crawling or talking are interfering with sleep. I also have a video about that. So you can check and see like, is this what's causing my baby to not sleep as well? Is the excitement over these milestones? There are also sleep regressions and I have a video and a blog post about that also. Sleep regressions can prevent your baby from sleeping well. And those are times, there are sometimes things you can do. So be sure to check out those videos to figure out what can I do? What do I need to just accept for now? They're just phases and Sometimes you can help things, but sometimes you have to just accept it and wait for that to pass. And with that in mind, it is always wise to be patient and do what you can, but don't stress too much about it. Short naps can bring so much stress into your life. If your baby is consistently waking up at 45 minutes, you're going to feel stressed. You're going to wonder what you're doing wrong. Go through this list, go through what I've talked about. See if there's something you can do to help your baby once you've done that, just accept it and go with it and try not to stress. The next nap is a new nap. Tomorrow is a new day. And I, we can feel really worried if it gives you any comfort. Know that my oldest baby took 45 minute naps until he was six and a half months old. Uh, very rarely did he take a nap longer than 45 minutes long. And a lot of that was caused by me. That's why I know what you should and should not do when your baby's taking these short naps, but it didn't damage him. So don't worry like, 
my baby is ruined forever, my baby, you know, there's benefits you're not getting when you're taking short naps. Like we all understand that if we're looking into naps, but your baby will be okay. It's going to be okay. Do what you can and then just relax. You don't want to get yourself worked up and too stressed out. It's good to problem solve, but it's not good for you to be super anxious and not enjoy your baby. I hope these things help you to get your baby taking longer naps. There is the occasional baby who no matter what you do, will take what we call a chronic 45 minute nap for a very long time. And I do have a blog post about that. So if you're having that, be sure to read it. It will bring you a lot of comfort. And if you have any questions, please feel free to drop them in the comments and I will answer them for you. And thanks for watching.